Joining us now for our bi-weekly Oakland Schools Education Insider segment is the Supervisor of School Culture and Climate for our Intermediate School District, Oakland Schools. Patricia Chin joins us now on the Megacast. Patricia, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, glad, yeah, glad to have you on to talk about your role uh, in Oakland Schools as their School Culture and Climate Supervisor. Define that role for us and what you're working on, both with Oakland Schools as the Intermediate School District, but also our local school districts on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the year. Absolutely. So um, at Oakland Schools, we have a couple of different um, units. And so I supervise the school culture and unit or school culture and climate unit. And that is just as it sounds, school culture and climate. What are the things that make kids have happy, safe, positive environments that allow staff to feel safe and positive in their environment so that they can get to the good work of teaching and learning? Um, we do lots of different projects throughout the year and even into the summer. So here we are still working on a couple of upcoming projects and really excited about those things in the works. So and the work continues on in the summer. Just because school is out doesn't mean that work to continue to, to build the culture and to improve the climate in our local schools and throughout uh, our local area. That doesn't mean that that goes on the back burner until the fall begins. So what sort of work does happen over the summer to continue to cultivate that culture in our schools going forward? Absolutely. You know, Oakland Schools is a year-round year um, service agency. And despite the fact that we think teachers and schools shut it down for the summer. They don't, they're planning with us and they're prepping. And so some of the major projects we have in the works right now that we're planning for um, is Here For You, which is an awareness campaign for students to increase awareness of the signs and symptoms of depression and anxiety and to diminish mental health stigma and to facilitate connections between peers and trusted adults in their community. Um, we are working with districts currently for our PREPARE model, which is a safety and crisis planning and response program. And we're also um, doing a lot of planning on a mental health grant that we are looking to implement starting in the fall, but would incur, you know, occur over two years with six of our districts really focused on developing strong mental health systems, which include a component focused on family engagement. So really building the system and including our communities in those systems. And so uh, taking a step back and, and thinking about all these different programs that go into cultivating and continue, continuing to foster those strong relationships between students and other students, students and teachers and, and, and faculty, and, and all those relationships that go into creating a welcoming school environment, what are those most important elements that your team and that teams in our individual school districts are focusing on to continue to build on, on those building blocks each and every school year and, and then each and every day? of those individual school, day, school years? Yeah, I think um, that's a really big question because culture and climate is a really big topic and building on those pieces, you know, obviously our, our primary role is to develop good humans that are strong learners. And so to do that, we have to build a foundation where they feel safe, they feel connected, they feel like they belong. And so a lot of different projects that we work on with districts are around looking at their system as a whole and how do we develop goals to support them through the continuous improvement process in, in seeing where are the gaps in the way that we're providing a healthy, safe and positive environment. Um, how can we maybe fill those gaps with some different systems or some different pieces, components? Um, how might we provide professional learning or resources at Oakland schools to our districts to support them with that? But then also how can we really develop sustainable models? So models that are financially sustainable, but also models that are sustainable with the people that live within the system. Um, really important components around mental health, important components around social emotional learning, and important com components around awareness, multi-tiered systems of support. So when I say it's a really big question, it's a really big question <laughs> because those systems can really encompass a lot of people. And, and then ultimately, what are the impact of these different systems that are in place, the different programs that are in place in improving uh, student performance in the classrooms, certainly student mood and student mental health. How, how have these actually been uh, effective 
in helping make improvements in our schools in recent years as the mental health, as the stability of the relationships between student, the student body and, and faculty and the administrators and every one, one of those relationships that goes into making a school. How has that really uh, changed how uh, school the school experience is for our kids in recent years as this has taken on a greater focus? Absolutely. You know, I think we originally, I'll, I'll just say prior to COVID, we had a lot of really strong systems in place that helped kids to feel safe, feel, feel like they belonged. They kind of just knew school's a safe place for me to be. These are sort of my people, my friends, my teachers, um, people that I feel comfortable with, people that I know, you know, how to interact with. Um, and then with COVID, we had to shift our models completely and, and move to these online types of instruction, which does at times sort of put a stint in that connectedness. And so we worked really hard to build connectedness within those environments, but then recognize that when we came back, we focused really heavily on instruction and we need to now continue to focus really heavily on that connectedness, that belonging because when kids feel connected and when they belong and they feel safe, they're able to do what they need to do to learn. And if they don't feel connected, there's a lot of research that supports that, that if, if I'm not feeling connected, it's really hard for me to focus and be present in the learning. So we wanna make sure that we're really supporting districts to build those, those positive connected cultures that allow kids to walk in and be ready to learn. They're ready to take on what teachers are offering and they're ready to take on the learning um, in line with a lot of that research that's out there. And we're seeing as schools are going sort of back to their roots, if you will, back to positive behavior intervention systems and things of that nature that build that deep tier one support for climate and culture, that they're having a lot of success. Kids are starting to feel that again, that's that space of, you know, I, I belong here. This is where I'm supposed to be and I'm connected and I'm learning and, and I can grow in that space. And teachers are feeling the same with those systems in place. Patricia, Patricia Chin is the supervisor of school culture and climate for Oakland schools, the intermediate school district uh, here in Oakland County that works alongside many of our local school districts on a, in a variety of different ways for a variety of different initiatives. And in this case, uh, as you have uh, these systems in place, these policies in place, uh, or these benchmarks that you are setting on the Oakland schools level, how does that then expand into the relationship and, on the individual school district level? How are you assisting our local school districts then in also implementing these sort of benchmarks, but also doing it in their own way and understanding uh, that it's going to have to be different from one school district to another, all of which have different cultures, different individuals, different personalities that are playing into how these are effective. Absolutely. So as, just as you said, every district has its own personality, has its own um, community, looks very different from, from district to district. So we can't just say, here's one set of guidelines and how you do everything. Here's one program or here's one um, you know way that you can just start to check off the boxes. So we work individually, our consultant teams work individually with districts to really think about what their needs assessments would say around their um, well-being goals. We come from a place of the whole child system or the whole child model where we look at um, the, the 10 components of the whole child and we say, how do we best create an environment with that's healthy, that's safe, that's engaged, that's supportive, and that's challenging to our kids? Because we wanna make sure that they're meeting all of those pieces, but looking at those 10 main components of the whole child is a really strong way to get started. Um, and then we go through, as I said, a needs assessment process, the continuous improvement process from the state through um, the MyKIP process is a really great foundational piece. We have consultants that meet with districts specifically for that. Um, and then we have consultants that go out and just essentially look at and say, okay, what is your data telling us that you have happening really well? And from an appreciative standpoint, what, how can we build on that? And then maybe what is your data telling us are some of the gap spaces that we wanna make sure to backfill in some capacity, either whether, whether it's with programming or whether it's better systems components, um, how can we best support that? And then of course we funnel some grant 
uh, monies from the state through into our districts, such as 31N, which is providing um, increased mental health supports to general education students. Um, our regional assistance grant, which is providing additional supports, whether it be academically or within culture and climate, to support our districts that are identified as needing that extra boost of support. Um, but a lot of that is really funneled through that continuous improvement process, looking at what are the things that we're doing really well, what are the things that we need to set as goals, and then what might be those um, sort of markers, if you will, along the way that we can check in with to ensure that we're meeting those goals in the appropriate ways. In August, Oakland Schools is going to be hosting a, a four-day long Building a Whole Child System Conference. This is going to be uh, August 7th through August 10th, 2023, and, and, and just a little bit over uh, a month this will be happening. But before we get into what's going to happen at the actual conference, let's talk about that concept as a whole. What does it mean to educate the whole child? So educating the whole child is really, you know, just as it sounds. We use a lot of acronyms in in education, but this is not one. So it really is just as it sounds. It really is looking at the whole piece of the child, every component that goes into them and saying, how do we support that child? How are we supporting their health? How are we supporting their safety? How are we supporting and building systems that engage them in their learning and in their community? How are we building systems that help them to feel supported? And how are we building systems that help them to feel challenged? Because we know kids learn better when they feel challenged. So um, it really is about those 10 main components that fit into those five tenants and look at, just as it sounds, the whole child within that picture. And, and then, uh, so to build on that, what will be discussed at, the, at this conference? What, will, what sort of professional development opportunities will be available to professionals in the community or, or others that may be able to participate in this Building a Whole Child System conference happening in August? Yeah, so the design of the conference is really for educators within Oakland County. Um, Monday and Thursday, so it's Monday through Thursday. Monday and Thursday are team-based days. So your team that works on well-being within your district would come and will really walk them through that whole child model and how to develop that model and develop the system for that model. And then Tuesday and Wednesday are breakout days, which means we have a variety of sessions that people can come and learn from, uh, different presenters. So it might be things around um, data, it might be things around that Michigan continuous improvement process, it might be things around um, mandated reporter and or um, human trafficking for some of our social workers and folks in the mental health field. Um, but it's just a lot of opportunities for people to gather information that's connected to that whole child model so that they can build then their own skill set within the model to support our kids individuals individually. Joining us on the program is Patricia Chin, the Supervisor of School Culture and Climate with Oakland Schools on our Oakland Schools Education Insider segment. Patricia, another minute or so left before we'll need to wrap things up today. Anything else that we should know about what efforts are being taken day in and day out all throughout the year, including in the summers, uh, by Oakland Schools and our individual school districts to continue to build a more positive and a welcoming and uh, educationally friendly environment for our, for our kids and really for the whole community? Yeah, I think the biggest thing um, that I would recommend to our educators and our families is just that partnership is what builds strong community and strong community builds strong culture and climate. And so um, we'd love for our Oakland County educators to join us at our August summit and uh, they can go to our events management page to get more information and to register. Um, we'd love to see families out at a program called View Fest that we'll be at at the Detroit Zoo on July 16th. That's um, an opportunity to just have some awareness and celebration around supports for people that are um, dealing with and informing themselves around mental health. And we're going to have some um, handouts with services and things like that. So that's one of the summer projects we're working on, but we'll also have some fun giveaway items. So we hope to see families there and our educators there, but really it's just um, summer for us is really an opportunity to plan and ensure that we're in the best space to support our districts throughout the year and to help our district leadership to plan and make sure that they're in the best space for their teachers to move forward as they get ready to start up another wonderful school year. 
The Building a Whole Child System Conference through Oakland Schools happens August 7th through August 10th. Educators, if you're interested, go to Oakland Schools' website to find more information. And you do have to register for, uh, for each and every one of those days, and it's capped off at 200 people. So get in on it as early as possible. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I wish you guys a wonderful day.